Hey guys, Andrew from IGN here. I'm with Anthony Birch from Gearbox. What's up? Uh, we're looking at Krieg, the new character for Borderlands 2, the Psycho class, yep. I believe. And uh, we've got a skill tree open here. He can do all kinds of amazing, crazy stuff. Kind of, Can you walk us through what we're looking at here? Yeah, so uh, from a high level, Krieg is a very high risk, high reward character. Um, he's almost always on the brink of death if you go down, say, the Mania tree, but he's doing the most insane damage of any character. So his action skill, Buzzaxe Rampage, basically works like, uh, actually, why don't you just, just use it in the, in the world just to sort of show it off. Um, you press the button, he takes out his buzz axe, and there are no enemies here because it's a sanctuary, but if you kill an enemy uh, by either throwing your buzz axe at him or just hitting him in the face with it, you get all your health back. So Krieg actually doesn't have any health regen uh, skills unlike all the other characters, so the main purpose of his action skill is to get his health back. And, and unlike most characters, or most uh, a lot of the characters we have in the game, where in order to be really good at them, you kind of want to take cover, you might want to play carefully a lot, Krieg is like, ah, fuck all that. I'm just going to run right into combat and take a dude's head off, and that's how I'm actually going to survive. So we'll just go through his three tr uh, trees really quickly. If we look at the Hellborn tree, the Hellborn tree is um, actually sort of an ins The idea for all of Krieg's skills to some extent was two things. The first philosophy was, let's make the player want to do things that they normally don't want to do. And the second thing was, let's take all the things that our psycho enemies do in the game and give the player the ability to be that or do that thing. So this tree really encapsulates both of those because this tree is about being on fire. Uh, you generally don't want to be on fire when you're playing as anybody else, but when you're Krieg, you want to be like those burning psychos. You always want to be on fire. So these first two skills are about increasing the chances that when you light somebody else on fire, you get lit on fire. And if you look at like numbed nerves uh, right there, that actually decreases all incoming damage once you're on fire. So you actually are hurting less when you're on fire, including the additional fire damage. So once you get five points in that, you're taking half damage from everything once you're on fire. Uh, he's also got a, a cool middle tier skill, which is placed very intentionally in the campaign, uh, which is called delusional damage, which is you don't have to set somebody on fire to get those effects on you. You just have to corrode them or electrocute or slag them or burn them because that's the, about the point in the game where you start fighting robots and you don't want to be using fire against robots. He's also got that really cool Hellfire Halitosis skill, which turns uh, his melee into him basically breathing dragon breath, again, in the same way that the burning psycho enemies in the game do. Um, his top tier is called Raving Retribution, where he basically starts screaming at the top of his lungs about like things that don't make any sense. <laughs> and while he's doing that, if he's on fire, uh, big fireballs will just start shooting out of his body and just seeking enemies and then just hitting them and setting them on fire, which in turn can make him be on fire longer, which in turn makes more of those fireballs come out. So he's all about these sort of self-perpetuating loops. If you can be clever enough and if you can, you can you know, uh, perform correctly, that will allow him to keep doing this cool stuff. So Mania Tree, this is personally my favorite tree. I think everybody's going to have a different favorite tree. We found that a lot with our focus testers. We're like, I don't know about this one. And then the other one, they're like, oh my god, it's the best thing ever. For me, this is the best thing ever. This tree is all about wanting to take damage. Again, you usually don't want to. Krieg wants to. That skill to the right, feed the meat, that increases your maximum health, which is good. But then it also increases your shield recharge delay, which is to say when your shield is down, how long it takes to even begin to get back up. You wouldn't think that's a good thing, but a lot of Krieg's uh, skills, like fuel the rampage beneath it, are about him taking damage uh, to his health to make his, his action seal cool down, speed up. So every time you're getting shot, not through the shield, but sh into your actual flesh, you're that much closer to going into Buzz X Rampage, killing a bunch of dudes and getting your health back. He what I love about that one is that teammates can hurt you too, so like yes. they can add to that effect. There is a friendly fire aspect to this, so like before you go into combat, you might want to get charged up by you know basically kind of being like again trying to be another bandit, kind of being like the guy who said shoot me in the face, you know, asking people <laughs> to, to shoot you and, and help you get uh, to your to your Buzz Axe quicker. Uh, this is light the fuse. It's a replacement for your fight for your life mode, where instead of going onto your knees and starting to shoot people, you actually get really angry, pull out a huge stick of dynamite, and can start running around at full speed, throwing sticks of dynamite at people before uh, uh, eventually trying to blow yourself up and take them with you. It's a really more active kind of, um, kind of mode for, the, for the, uh, the fight for your life, and it's, it's got some really cool synergy with stuff I'm about to talk about. Um, so release the, actually you want to really quickly go up to you know, uh, the Silence of the Voices, because that one's fun to talk about. So Silence of the Voices, this one really, really significantly increases your melee damage to the point where when you put five points in it, you've got plus 250% melee damage. But it gives you a 12% chance to attack yourself. Uh, so you can get yourself into situations where you'll be fighting dudes and going after them with melee or even in Buzz Axe Rampage and all of a sudden you'll hit yourself in the face with your own Buzz Axe and then if you've got a point like light the fuse, you'll hit yourself in the face with the Buzz Axe and then get so angry you'll pull out TNT and start throwing it at people. Like, he has a really cool sort of loop to him. 
Um, and then that's even better when you combine it with release the beast, which is when you try to go into Buzzhack's Rampage, if you have less than a third of your health remaining, you turn into a badass psycho, you get all your health back, and you get way more melee damage. So what's actually possible to do is, and I've had this happen a couple times, where if you spec heavily into this tree, you'll try to melee a guy, you'll accidentally hit yourself into fight for your life mode, you'll take out a bunch of dynamite, you'll start throwing at people to kill them, you'll eventually kill one, and you'll come out of fight for your life with less than 30 health remaining, and then you'll go into a uh, Buzz Axe Rampage, but this time you'll be a badass, and then you'll kill everything. Like, there's an insane loop you can get into this guy uh, that's all about being really close to death, but doing a tremendous amount of damage as a result. It's really cool how you guys have built in stacking to these characters too, because it's like even the Mechromancer in her own way, it's like uh, since you guys have started adding classes, like things build, you know, mm -hmm. and like I think it's really cool that you have that loop of crazy things that can happen depending on what you put into the character. Oh yeah, and I mean speaking of stacking, it was a really good seg actually, because <laughs> this uh, tree, Bloodlust, is all about getting stacks of Bloodlust. And basically in, in a, with the Mechromancer, you got to stack by basically, you know, killing an enemy or expending a magazine without reloading. This guy, you get uh, stacks by just dealing damage. It doesn't even matter how much damage you deal, it's just about dealing damage. You might want to, you know, use a lot of submachine guns, or you might want to, you know, uh, just basically work, focus on fire rate over actual damage. And so he can increase the size of his uh, clip, as you saw before. This increases the size of your weapon swap. And as you get further down the tree, you see more insane things happen. So there's a, that, that's a mid-tier skill that adds dynamite to your buzz axe. So you can throw it and blow people up. There is a skill that, um, there are basically these three skills that work in this crazy tandem where one of the skills increases your gun damage. I think that's if you go up two. That skill, every time you kill an enemy, the bullet increases your melee damage. And then if you go down to the grenade icon, every time, no, sorry, to the right. I was wrong, the axe. Yeah. And then every time you kill an enemy with melee, that increases your grenade damage. And then the grenade icon on the left, every time you kill an enemy with a grenade, that increases your gun damage. So the idea is to be always, always A, B, K, always be killing, essentially. Where <laughs> shoot a guy so that your melee is awesome. Then melee a guy so your grenades are awesome. Then grenade a guy so that your guns are awesome. And you're sort of just ping-ponging between those three methods of killing people without ever stopping trying to keep your stacks up as high as you possibly can. Um, and his top tier is really awesome. It's called Blood Explosion. And it basically takes whatever element you killed an enemy with. And if you didn't use an element, it's just a regular explosion. But it makes an explosion of that element around that enemy, and that can stack. So if you get three enemies that are really low in health, and you kill one with a shock, it'll explode in lightning, and then kill a guy next to him with lightning, which makes him explode in lightning, and then that kills the guy. And you can get this domino effect, basically, if you get the guys down low enough. And that's always active, which is super cool. And the damage hurts more the more stacks you have. So. This character, or this particular tree, is always about always be doing damage and always be trying to cycle between grenades and you know uh, melee and guns. That's really cool. It's awesome how different each one of these makes this character. And everything you're describing just sounds so fun to play. You know, like Craig seems like he's just a really fun, goofy character to play. He's with. a really fun character. The funny thing is that he is fun in a very hardcore kind of way. He's fun in a way that is intentionally, at, at, at the outset, kind of seems unintuitive. Like if you know, I had to just summarize this character in a sentence, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is the guy where his tank tree is about setting yourself on fire." They'd be like, "What? What? What? That doesn't. <laughs> that makes literally no sense." And that's kind of part of the fun of him is that for people who've played the game a little while and people who understand the way that you generally are supposed to play, he's supposed to edge you out of those comfort zones and try to suggest, "Hey, play this crazy other way that you've never thought about. That still feels like Borderlands, but you're intentionally trying to set yourself on fire. You're intentionally making sure your shields are down. You're running around, not taking a second to even look at the loot during a combat because you want to make sure your stacks stay up." I mean, part of what's so great about Borderlands is how the characters complement each other in co-op. Right. You know, obviously, like the Sirens operating as the healer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how, how do you see him factoring into team play? Like, how do you see him kind of benefiting other players? Uh, he's a really good kind of a wild card character to have because he's got a skill called Redeem the Soul that, that Adam can highlight if you go down to. And uh, Redeem the Soul is actually allows you to instantly res anybody in your party, but in return, you go down, which... Like, oh, why would I want that? Because if you have fucking uh, the light the fuse, then that actually allows you to immediately take out your dynamite and start going to town on people. He also, uh, again, the fact that he has that fuel the rampage and that friendly fire, he can be the guy that everybody's sort of making sure he's at his best by helping him out and shooting him a few times without ideally shooting him too much. But he's also really good for just getting in there and sort of taking aggro because he's always generally going to want to be right in the mix of things, just going to be want to be in everybody's face. Uh, but I think like all the characters, you can sort of change his utility within the team based on how you build him. If he's going into Bloodlust, then he's your elemental nuker. Maybe you don't need your Maya to go into her elemental tree. If he's going to go into Bloodlust, then he's going to be moving really, really fast. Maybe you want a healer to make sure he stays up so that his stacks don't start bleeding out. I mean, in that way, you mentioned Maya. You know, one of Maya's skills is that she can shoot people to heal them. Yeah. When she shoots him, which wins? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the healing wins out. He will, he will get healed. Um, which actually kind of makes them, in a cool way, a really good pair. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil too much, but we'll have, a, we'll have a, a video coming out pretty soon 
that basically kind of gives his backstory to some extent and, and kind of says at least who he is as a person and how this crazy psycho guy became a, a bolt hunter. Because the neat thing about his personality is that um, he actually kind of has two personalities to him. He, he's got the really outward, aggressive, kind of Hulk, I just want to kill things personality. <laughs> but, but deep inside him, uh, you have a very, very small chance when he does stuff during battle dialogue that you, you'll hear the same version of him that used to be the dominant personality, kind of saying like, okay, if you're going to be doing this crazy shit, at least be killing the right people. Don't run around killing people in the sanctuary. I want you to take out bandits and stuff like that. So he's kind of conflicted. That's um, really awesome. Cool. cool. Well, um, can we see a little bit of him in action? Or? Yeah. Let's go to Blinchwood. Going to get that sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> Get her deputy's badge and <laughs> use shotguns. And so uh, first, you're probably going to want to buy some skills, obviously. You have 30 skill points remaining. I'm 61. I'm not going to spend all 61. You don't want to spend all 61 skill points? You don't want to mix it up and make be insane? All right, fair enough. <laughs> we're playing as if we're like 31. Oh, we're pretending. Okay. Yeah. So this is a level 31 character. <laughs> <laughs> Ignoring the fact that there is a six next to his name. <laughs> so as you can see, Adam has specced into the, the Mania skill tree. So you're going to see him hopefully be doing a lot of melee damage, hopefully using his action skills quite a bit. Uh, he's slagging, and uh, a good thing to do after you slag these guys is move in for the melee, because uh, if you've also put any points into... Uh, oh, oh here, we go, here we go. There's some dynamite. There's a skill that the Psycho has where any additional overkill damage you do uh, is returned to you as health. So if you slag things and then melee them and do a tremendous amount of damage, then all of a sudden, boom, you're back up to full health. You will see, I think, the, the, the number, or rather the letter K, you know, as in like K damage. That was 808,000 damage. I see the letter K playing more as this character than any other character <laughs> in the game. Like, what, if you spec for him right, you can be obliterating your enemies with melee. Or you can miss a buzz axe throw from five feet away. <laughs> because you're the worst person. <laughs> well, how would you say the cooldown for his action skill compares to some other characters? So his cooldown at its base level is really long. Uh, the idea was like to, to make sure he felt distinct from Zero, who uses his action skill all the time in almost every single combat. We wanted to make sure, and because his action skill is so powerful, uh, you see now he's turning into a badass psycho because he revived and had less than 33% of his health remaining. And then he's basically one-shotting dudes. He just did 700... 29,000 damage to that guy. Uh, and, yeah, sorry. So the idea was that since his action skill is so good and gives him all his health back and does things like literally a million damage that <laughs> he just did to that guy, uh, we wanted to make the cooldown longer. But also giving the ability to speed up that cooldown via skills like Fuel the Rampage. But even at its base level, the more damage you take, the faster you get your action skill back. So again, it's that whole like, What's kind of an insane thing that players don't generally want to do? Well, they generally don't jump in front of bullets, but they will if they think that's the best way to get their action skill up and get their health back. I mean, how hard do you think it is, uh, like obviously you spent more time with him, to adjust to this playstyle? Like, uh, like what are kind of the hardest parts of switching over to the crew? It's, it's those very th same things that make it cool, like I was talking about. You know, the, the realization that, no, I want to be on fire. No, I want to have my shields down. We had, uh, we had a bunch of focus testers come in to play the, the character, and it was really interesting seeing them from sort of week to week, because first time we talked to a guy who was like, God, I'm playing Hellborn and I just it doesn't work for me. It just I, I don't understand what to do. It's not fun, blah, blah, blah. I think you really need to change all these things. We saw him again a week later and he was like, I mean this in all sincerity. I need you to take every single thing I said about Hellborn and delete it. Like, don't ever show that to designers because I now understand it and I fucking love it. Like, there's, a, there's definitely kind of a learning curve with this guy, which is why we're more comfortable sort of releasing him now later in the game's lifespan than if we had at the beginning. Sure. Uh, because his, you know, he's sort of for the guy who's played the game before and knows generally how to play, because now we want to have you try all this other new shit. Yeah, it's really interesting how many different versions of this character you can kind of create, oh, yeah. depending on the, no the tree you choose. No Very cool. And his, uh, the dialogue he's saying is kind of amazing, too, actually. Like it, well, it, it's, it's, it really is like having a, a psycho that you were playing as. You, know, like a, you guys actually captured that really, really well. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was always the goal. Trying to do that, but also not make you confused. It's like, wait, was that an enemy talking, or was that me? <laughs> And he still sort of has that uh, suicide psycho tendency too, because he is running it with the dynamite. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that, that's exactly where that came from. It was like we've got we've got the crazy badass psycho where you turn into like, you. I mean, when you go into badass mode, I know you saw his arms change, but actually, any co-op people like there, the co-op your co-op friends will see your torso just change in size, and you'll like mutate into this enormous thing. 
And uh, yeah, that particular middle light diffuse skill was specifically to say, okay, how can we make the suicide psycho part of this dude's character? You know, you mentioned that he pairs really well with Maya. Are there any other cool party configurations you think complement him really well? Yeah, I think uh, going with Zero is really cool. Uh, we've joked about wanting to make a, a you know, an achievement for this guy called like Assassin's Creed or something like that, <laughs> where you have Zero and Creed, you know, mixing that together. They're having having two melee dudes come at it from very different perspectives because Zero's about Zero's basically a rogue and this dude's basically a barbarian. Having that combo is fun. Um, he and the Mechromancer is cool too because one of the things that Creek really likes is not having aggro on him. One of the things that's cool about his Buzz Axe throw is that if you hit somebody with throw, it may not do as much damage as an actual swipe, but it'll, it'll stagger them so that you can close that distance and kill them. Creek wants to have some damage dealt to him, but there are moments where he wants to not be the focus of the gunfight, and uh, the Mechromancer's bot is really good for that. I mean, one of the things that's really interesting is like we're watching him be primarily, you know, built for melee, but yeah. he obviously can still use guns. You know? Oh yeah, like, no, he's, uh, he's still a gun guy, absolutely. And in what ways, you know, obviously if you're playing through the campaign as him, you're going to encounter moments where you have to kind of have like long range combat and focus yeah. on guns. Like, how does he work with say like a sniper rifle? You know, like I mean, what are what are kinds of ways you can build him to make sure you take advantage of every kind of gun? Um, well, the blood the, the, the bloodlust tree is really good for that because that's again that's about melee damage. It's about uh, or no, sorry, not about not about melee damage. It's about magazine size is what I meant to say. There's one skill that does that. There's one skill that just does uh, you know giving you a lot of gun damage. The um, the, the Hellborn Tree is also very good for that because you'll find that one of the skills, when you're on fire, it increases your critical hit damage and your weapon damage and I think your melee damage. So if you can get a boss set on fire or if you can get one of his minions set on fire and then start focusing on that boss, then you'll do a really good job. And I've had moments where I was playing the Bunker, who was our all airborne boss, you know, about two thirds of the way through the game. And I had spec'd for a Krieg that was generally melee, but I still took him down pretty well because uh, if you have a lot of points into uh, your melee damage, then that transfers to your thrown buzz axe. So there's nothing more satisfying than taking down a buzzard or taking down the bunker with a thrown buzz axe that you have to like time and like lead your target and stuff. <laughs> and you can also add dynamite to it in the bloodlust tree, so you can do even more damage with the thrown buzz axe. That's really cool. Well, awesome. This is a really good look at Krieg. Uh, when is he coming out? He's coming out. Do we have an exact date? Uh, Krieg is coming out May 14th for Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. Awesome, and he's separate from Season Pass. Yes, he is separate. Very cool. Well, thank you for this look. Uh, this is I'm actually really excited to dive into this character. No, he's my favorite character. I hope you like him. <laughs> I appreciate the time, and for all your Borderlands 2 needs, keep it locked to IGN.